war in Ukraine has pretty much grinded to a halt this whole last year. After incredible offenses by Ukraine in late 2022, taking back some 15,000 square kilometers in total in Kharkiv and Kherson, there's been no large gains by either side. War Mapper on Twitter has put out this great chart visualizing this, and you should definitely go check them out. But those small gains that each side has made, such as Russia and Bakhmut and Ukraine right now on Robotin, they've all mostly come at great cost and largely just with infantry on foot rather than with tanks and armored vehicles. And the number one reason for this has been drones. With drones, you can easily get an overhead view of the battlefield, spot your enemy coming from miles away, and send in these newly called FPV drones to strike tanks and vehicles, or direct anti-tank teams to take positions and hit them from the cover of the tree lines. So these drones have become a major force multiplier. And the biggest problem is that these drones are so cheap. Both sides have literally thousands upon thousands of them and they can cost as little as $200 each. The cost to shoot them down is significantly higher. A single Patriot missile can cost $3 million. IRIST and NASM's half a million dollars each, depending on the variant. A Stinger man pad, some $50,000. And even a few short bursts from the Jakpard will cost several thousand dollars in ammo. So obviously a real problem exists. The solution to turn the tide might just be lasers. Solid state lasers, which have been in development for years now, would only cost a couple dollars per shot. And its magazine capacity is limited only by how much electricity it can generate. But it's been almost a decade now since the law's laser weapon system was first placed on a US ship to shoot down drones. So where are they? We've seen them in research and testing for half a century now, but still no real viable system has been mass produced. So are they coming? Or are they just some far off mythical fantasy that will never really work in reality? First though, real quick, thanks to this week's sponsor, Factor 75. I recently had them as a sponsor earlier and several people came back and told me they really enjoyed them. And apparently it was enough people because they came back to do another video. They're the same company who brought you HelloFresh, but now with easy, ready to eat meals. And it takes out all the extra stress of meal prepping, planning, and all the dishes. And I tell you those dishes are my least favorite part of meals. They also make it real easy for you when you're just in a hurry, or working at home, or to take to the office, or just gaming. And all that can save you a ton of money from the temptations to order food out when you cannot or you don't have enough time to cook a full meal yourself. It's extremely flexible, with dozens of meal choices, including vegan, keto, calorie smart, and more. And as you can see, they have a huge number of meals to choose from. Use my link or go to go.factor75.com and use the code P-O-G-C-O-V-E-R-T SEP50 for 50% 50 off your first box. Click the link in the description or scan the QR code with your phone here. Again, Factor 75. Laser weapons have actually been around for a long time. Since the 1970s, there's been everything from simple blinding lasers to programs to develop more advanced systems to even destroy satellites in space. There's been roughly 100 different projects over time, but pretty much all of them have failed. And not just in the US, but in other countries too, like the Soviet Union. But, 50 years later, why don't we have lasers yet? It sounds dumb, but the US has spent literally billions of billions of dollars on projects like Project Excalibur, where a nuclear-powered laser would actually shoot down an ICBM in the 80s, the Miracle Laser in the 80s and 90s to destroy satellites, which was actually attempted in 1997 when it failed and actually seriously damaged itself in the process, the famous airborne laser that was fit into the nose of a Boeing 747 to shoot down ballistic missiles in the early 2000s, laws in 2014 which was placed on a US warship, but development problems Problems, issues tracking targets, large power requirements, and slow charging times means it was never mass produced. There are a lot more problems in designing and building a laser weapon system than one might think. First, the power or the strength of the laser. You really don't need that much power to destroy or disable a drone. To be as cheap and light as possible, they're often built out of the lightest materials possible, like lots of real thin plastic. Most lasers in development recently are in the tens of kilowatt range. Laws is 30, Helios is 60, and Israel's iron beam is under 100, but they're in the process of upgrading it to stronger. But to disable a cheap drone, you really only need a few kilowatts. However, the weaker the output, the longer it would take to destroy or disable the drone. The next problem is how to power the laser. Most early lasers, and still some today, are chemically powered. One issue with that is they require the weapon to haul around a big supply of chemicals, like fluorine and tertonium, etc., and once you run out, you can no longer fire it. So that makes them less practical when considering them as a frontline mobile air defense unit. Many today are now powered by electricity, such as solid state lasers. These are limited really only by how much electricity it can generate, and that itself can be a problem. 
One major issue limiting the ability to deploy lasers on warships in the US Navy has been not having enough power. In a perfect world, you would need only as much power as the laser puts out, so 50 kilowatt laser would need 50 kilowatts of power. But nothing is 100% efficient, and you have energy losses, heat exchanges, diffuse, and so on. Solid state lasers tend to be around 50% efficient, so they require twice as much input for output. And while a lot of US destroyers, like the Arleigh Burke, have around 10,000 kilowatts of power available, already almost all of that is used just to run the ship, such as the massive powerful radars, all the weapon systems, displays, controls, sonar, and much, much more. Another major issue is that the atmosphere tends to absorb and scatter the laser beam. Humidity, fog, and dust in the air can diminish the power of a laser over longer distances. But when we're talking about these cheap quadcopter drones, you really only need a few kilometer range. And finally, there are some pretty easy countermeasures for lasers. A lot of people will mention mirrors, but that would be extremely heavy for a small drone that already has a very limited payload capacity and battery life. Just painting it white, or even a thin layer of copper alone, would reflect a large amount of the energy from the laser. You might also wonder where electronic warfare might fall into this, as an alternative to shooting down a drone is just jamming it so it can no longer operate. And this has absolutely been a major focus on the front lines. But besides for a few videos of drones briefly losing signal, just to gain it again and carry on its mission, jamming works, but there's no disputing that it's far from perfect, and hasn't been a major solution for these drones. The drones are still operating, and we still see like 15 plus videos a day of them striking their targets. Now another problem is why we don't have lasers. To an extent, the US really doesn't know what to build anymore. They already have a military that can pretty much handle any of the most powerful military forces out there, especially considering the late Cold War era. Most nations cannot compete in any envisioned conventional war with the US. So, obviously, a lot of other nations have looked into alternative weapons and using cheap technology available today to try to exploit weaknesses and be able to attack in ways that was not possible 30 years ago. And drones are a perfect example of that. And there really hasn't been a large conventional war between two powerful militaries with modern weapons for a long time. So this war in Ukraine has a lot of countries starting to rethink how wars today are going to be fought. Some of the obvious ones are the need for much larger arsenals and production capabilities for things like artillery shells and drones, but also the need to try to find ways to deal with enemy drones. And again, lasers seem to be a very attractive option with their low cost per shot and virtually unlimited magazine. So going forward in the future, it's likely we're going to see much more focus and new laser systems in development. Whether they can overcome the inherent problems with them is still left to be seen.